So those of you that have uh, subscribed to my channel for a while now will already probably know that the Biquad antenna is one of my favourite antennas. It's uh, simple to build and it really is a powerful antenna and you can get one up and running in a matter of a couple of hours with uh, very little tools. It really is a powerful antenna. But for the last few months I've actually been trying to develop a uh, omnidirectional backward antenna because this is directional and sometimes you want something that uh, is omnidirectional um, that will perform just as well as uh, something like this although you're never going to get an omnidirectional antenna to outperform a directional one you uh, can still build one with similar characteristics and similar power so this is a design I've come up with its DBI is similar to this this one is actually uh, probably about 14 dbi, 15 dbi because it's a double bi-quad but uh, a single bi-quad will probably uh, get you around uh, 10 to 11 dbi this one comes out at 9.5 dbi so uh, it's quite powerful for an omnidirectional antenna and uh, I was actually quite surprised just how uh, powerful it is when we come to test this at the end of the video and to test it, I uh, tested it against this uh, dipole antenna, which is uh, about five and a half, six dBi. You've seen me construct these before. It's classed as like a, a longer range dipole antenna, but um, when comparing it next to this uh, biquad, omnidirectional biquad antenna, there really is no comparison. This one is clearly more powerful than uh, one of these dipole antennas. So in order to make this antenna we're going to need to make two bi-quad elements and here I've got some two lengths of copper wire around uh, 270 millimeters in length should be fine to make uh, one element and uh, you're also going to need some needle nose pliers preferably like mine where you've got a nice flat surface here so we can butt it up to this uh, measuring tool that is exactly 31.5 millimeters across that um, horizontal there and that saves us actually measuring all the uh, different wavelengths for the bends. So to make the bi-quad element itself it's pretty straightforward. I've done a few videos now and I'll link a few in down below if you uh, are quite new to my channel and uh, it's really really easy using this method by uh, actually making yourself a little measuring tool first and using that as a template sort of to actually put all your angled bends in. So you put it up against the measuring tool and get your needle nose pliers and you can remove it and then you know that this length here is exactly a quarter wavelength at 31.5 millimeters so we can put our first bend in there and that's why it makes it real easy these pliers are really cheap off Amazon but because they've got this large flat area they are ideal for making bi-quad antennas and then we can put our second bend in just the same and you can do that and go around and get all your bends in your bi quad real easy and real quick so my two elements are now finished and what I've done I've gone around straightened them all up and made sure they sit nice and flat to the uh, surface itself and because my copper wire was purchased on a reel it had this varnish over it so I've actually gone in where I'm going to be soldering and uh, remove that with a little bit of emery paper so hopefully you can see here what I've done I've arranged my elements are using some tape to hold them upright and they've got them crossing here at the u-bend and I can just move that up so you can see it a little bit better so what I'm actually gonna do now is put a big blob of solder right here in the center of that cross and solder up both those two together and then we can actually move on to the coax and just move it around a little bit just to make sure you've got uh, that completely soldered up So now we're ready to move on to the coax that we're going to use for this antenna. Now this is LMR195, it's uh, low loss coax or you could use some other type of uh, quality branded low loss coax and this has actually got a lot of strength in it so we could actually use this. This uh, type of coax, the RG402, is a little bit too thin and with the weight of the element it would probably bend over so I'm going to use some of this semi-rigid stuff again, um, really impressed with this stuff. This is RG 316. So I've got a length of coax here that I'm going to prepare ready to solder on the elements. I've um, cut the outer braid back here to expose three millimeters of the inner core and uh, you want to try and aim for a gap of about three millimeters and what I'm going to do is put some solder around the side of this outer braid here at the top 
and a little bit of solder on top here because that's where we're going to attach our element to. So you're going to need some kind of clamp to hold the coax vertical while you actually solder all this together and the best way to do this is if you've tinned up the sides of the coax here and just a little bit of tin on the top of the inner core of the coax and also the base of the legs make sure you tin those up as well and if you just place it on top like so and then go in and solder each individual leg one at a time and then very lastly solder the centre pin to the top of the element here then uh, it should be okay that's the easiest way that I've found to actually do this so far and once you get one soldered in then you can work your way around it's a lot easier once you've got that first leg soldered in place so now that I've got all those bottom legs soldered to the outer braid it's time to solder on the top legs onto that centre core there and the easiest way to do this is if you hold it down on a flat surface push down slightly and then get in at the side with your soldering iron and you should have no problems at all soldering that together so this is the antenna virtually finished but a couple of things I like to do before I actually paint this is uh, get my Dremel here with a uh, flat cutting wheel on and just level off the actual joints of those bottom legs all around uh, the base here with that coax get rid of any spurs or anything like that just to make sure that uh, there's no risk of those shorting out and connecting to that uh, center center coax there on the uh, actual antenna because it'll short out your blades and uh, your antenna will be no good and something else i like to do is uh, some of this epoxy putty here mix a little bit up and just uh, mold it in around the legs top and bottom just to add some more strength there you could probably use hot glue as well but i find this is uh, quite strong and it does a much neater job so all that's left to do now is to uh, give it a test and i'm going to test it against one of these uh, dipole antennas they're the extended range type that i've shown you how to make before they give about uh, 5.5 to 6 dbi so we'll see how it goes next to that and this theoretically has about 9 dbi but remember it's a non-directional antenna not a directional antenna so the actual beam itself is not focused in one direction so although it has got quite a high dbi it's doing it um, all around so as a sphere so it's not going to have the performance of a directional antenna but uh, i'm hoping that it will certainly outperform one of these so i've got the uh, dipole antenna connected at the moment and it's coming in respectable about 65% uh, there, hovering around between 60% 65%. So I'll just see if it settles down a little bit. So what I'll do now, I'll connect up the biquad antenna, the omnidirectional biquad I've just built. See what kind of difference we get. So a big difference there, jumping up to uh, about 88%, settling about halfway. So it seems to have settled around uh, the 85% mark, so not a bad increase at all. So I'm really pleased how this antenna has turned out. So I hope you found that video interesting, and if you did, please, uh, as always, Give it a thumbs up and uh, if you've got any questions drop them below and hopefully I'll see you on the next one.